Banjo-Kazooie, Rare's golden platforming gem, critically acclaimed, high-selling and well-received masterpiece. It spawned a close sequel, Banjo-Tooie, and took everything in Kazooie to the next level. Then in 2003, Banjo-Kazooie Granny's Revenge, the game that no one remembers, made a 2D version out of the Banjo formula, which was amazing even though it didn't sell as well. And I love them all. Platforming and collecting jiggies is fun, the level design is top notch, and for me personally, there is so much nostalgia, it's so tasty. One thing I love about Banjo-Kazooie is the main series villain Gruntilla the Witch. She's hilarious, she makes poetry, she resents Banjo, and that's her personality. And today, I'm going to talk about how great Grunty is. Join me as we have a series talk. By taking Banjo's sister Tootie at the start of the game, she kicks the game off. She's responsible and she's in control of everything that's going on from start to finish. Right after the tutorial, you're venturing through her lair. Once inside, you can take a look around and see that there's a picture with a space missing in it and a jiggy just laying around. You fill in the picture and Mumbo's mountain opens. Why is this relevant? It's in Grunty's lair. She talks to you, taunting you throughout the entire game, laughing it up like she owns the place. No oh, wait, she does. Even when you get to the end and meet her at first fun, she says it herself. My lair is done and here he stands through all my tricks and traps and lands. Everything is hers. Clanker is her garbage disposal. The rusty bucket is her ship. The house in Mad Monster Mansion is her mansion. I wonder what she does for a living. Grunty is in control of everything that's going on and this is important because it helps lead the player to the final showdown against her. Since she's responsible and Banjo's accomplishments undo something that Grunty put in place, it helps her feel that everything being done is relevant to the act of saving Tootie. <laughs> In the next game, Grunty comes back at the aid of her sisters and she kills Bottles starting the new game off yet again. And although she doesn't have as much control in Tui, but what is beyond her control is presented as something beyond anyone's control. Nevertheless, she hosts the Tower of Tragedy Quiz, one of the worlds is named after her, and she owns a theme park. Again, she owns everything and she's in control. Granny's Revenge is no different, in fact, she has more control here than in Tui. Grunty kidnaps Kazooie and guards her until she's defeated in battle in the second world. She hid the Jiggy, sealed the world, and somehow made Master Jiggy Wiggy allergic to touching Jiggies. It's his head. I I, I don't know. Ah, it bites! Part of the world is named after her again, and she runs the Fair Castle, which is the Furnace Fun equivalent in Grunty's Revenge. So it's pretty cemented at this point that Grunty is the villain, and she does a damn good job at it. <sighs> what? There's another Banjo game? Did Grunty come back? Your answer is maybe. So here it is, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, with Cars, driving, and typos. The game opens with a throwback to the first two games. Not even Rare remembers Granny's Revenge. Followed by seeing Grunty come back to Spiral Mountain. Banjo walks up to her and they seem to engage in combat, but someone turns up. Meet the Lord of Games, otherwise known as Log. He's the creator of all video games and he decides to have a chat with Banjo, Kazooie, and Grunty to settle their differences by hitting them against each other. And the Lord said, play car games against each other. The Gospel of Banjo, here ends the reading. So Log comes in and supplies Banjo and Grunty with vehicles to use and sends them into Showdown Town, locking them out of Spiral Mountain in the process, which starts the game. It's kind of like how Grunty kidnaps 2D and that starts the events of Banjo-Kazooie. Log then introduces them to Showdown Town, which contains game worlds of his creation. Kind of like how Granny's lair contains her lands. Log expresses that the worlds of his creation contain jigsaw pieces. Kind of like how Granny spread the jiggies around in the worlds in Grunty's Revenge. The second world in Nuts and Bolts, Logbox 720, is named after Log. Kind of like how the sixth world in Banjo-Tooie, Granny's Industries, is named after Grunty. At the end of Nuts and Bolts, Log asks Banjo various questions about the game. It's kind of like how Grunty asks Banjo various questions at the end of the three previous games. Now, did you notice that? A lot of the acts that Grunty did that established her as a villain were actually being done by Log instead. 
Throughout Nuts and Bolts, Banjo is working to undo Log's actions of kicking him out of Spiral Mountain by winning Jiggies to eventually get back, all the while Grunty just stands there in Showdown Town doing mostly nothing. She does turn up in each world at least once for what's called a Grunty mission, and a decent number of them seem to be things at least mildly worth worrying about. And then there's her plan to destroy some billiard balls. <laughs> I shall destroy the giant's billiard balls, and as a result, they will have to buy some more! When you enter a grunty mission, the game darkens the atmosphere because you're about to go up against her, but I have a hard time justifying why they should be presented this way because grunty is presented in a more minor role. Even when the grunty missions are relevant, or even random missions where grunty is responsible, at the beginning of the game, Log says that grunty's role in the game is to stop Banjo and Kazooie, alluding to the idea that grunty is doing bad stuff because Log told her to do it. The way Nuts and Bolts presents itself is that Log is the villain and Grunty is the minion, due to Log taking all of Grunty's acts from the previous games and doing it all himself. How can I be convinced that Grunty is the villain when, if I knock her over, she says, this behavior is out of line? Is she obeying rules? When the drill dies in Banjo-Tooie, Grunty says, we fight to the death, and before that she's still trying to kill Banjo with the drill itself. Grunty is a ruthless psychopath. Why is she obeying rules? The only possible incentive for her to do that is Log transforming her into a pumpkin after she started being skeptical. But I don't know why that would stop her if she was still interested in revenge after almost dying at the hand of Banjo three times before. Even at the end where she reveals throughout the game that her grunt bots were working on a vehicle to help her take over Sparrow Mountain, it was still under Log's mediation because he was the one who initiated the car game to begin with. I just don't see strong reasons why Grunty should be considered the villain. Never at any one point in Nuts and Bolts have I felt like what I was doing contributed to taking down Grunty. I feel like I'm up against Log. Technically speaking, I am up against Grunty, but the setup of the game does a bad job at communicating this. Even when I hit Log with my car, he basically threatens Banjo and Kazooie's lives in video game terminology. Presenting villains in games properly is important because it creates a distinct feel and anticipation before going up against them, and doesn't work when you give those roles to someone else. This shouldn't just be applied to Banjo. In Mario, typically Bowser is the one in control because he kidnaps Peach, and that triggers Mario to get moving. In The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Link is called by Na'vi because the Deku Tree Sense Darkness is looming over Hyrule due to Ganondorf's intentions of taking over. These adventures feel satisfying to complete because you're ultimately trying to take down the force that started it up to begin with, and not a fake one. Now you might be wondering about story heavy games like other Zeldas or RPGs, where there might be a plot twist or something like that, where the final boss might be different to what players expect in the lead up. The thing about that is that the final boss itself is still usually responsible for the game starting up. I'm not gonna lie, the only reason I beat this game was to record footage of the end cutscene. That's all I have to say on the matter. So, do you agree with me? Do you think that Log taking over the game made the entire experience feel arbitrary? Or do you think that I'm a complete lunatic who should be thrown in an insane asylum when my opinion will never be heard again? Let me know down in the comments, and also let me know if you just noticed that I denounced nuts and bolts entirely without talking at all about the gameplay change from collection to cars. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please feel free to leave a like down below and post a comment saying why you liked it. If you didn't like it, then please also feel free to leave a comment saying why you didn't like it, so long as the comment can be used constructively for future videos. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos in the future. Up next will be the pilot for a new series called Original vs Remake, where I'll be comparing Diddy Kong Racing for the Nintendo 64 uh, to its remake on the DS, so look forward to that. I'd like to thank you all so very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. A goodbye.